So once again, thank you all for coming this morning. We want to thank everybody, our friends who are watching us online. Just be sure, uh, can we lower the volume a little bit? JP, please, thank you. I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. Thank you. Uh, have you guys received your study guides? Make sure you have your study guides because I think some of you guys would like to keep this here with you today. If you have not received, you have plenty of them out there for the study guides for you guys to keep. Let me start by asking this question. Are you listening already? Pay attention already. Is it more likely for the wise to do something foolish or for the fool to do something wise? What do you think? It is, more, it is more likely for the wise to do something foolish or the fool to do something wise? How many of you think it is more likely for the wise to do something foolish? Miss your hands. How many of you think it's more likely for the fool to do something foolish, to do something wise? Okay, we got, we got, we got Sydney there, right? I personally believe it is more likely for the wise to do something foolish than for the fool to do something wise because when you're a wise, at least you got a shot, right? Now, when you're fool, <laughs> I know you, you really don't have a whole lot of a, a hope there. So, why am I saying this? I'm saying smart people make mistakes. A smart people do stupid things, don't they? How many of us have ever done something stupid? Let me see your hands. All right, so, so, so here's your chance right now. Turn to your person sitting right next to you and say, you've done something stupid. Do that, please, do me a favor now. So just look at them, they say, you've done something stupid. Right? Say back to each other again. And make sure you do say to each other, right? I know you've done something stupid. All right, good. All right, you guys are warmed up now? Warmed up? Okay, so, so you see, so with the title that I have, Five Stupid Things People Do With Money, I'm not calling anyone is stupid. All what I'm saying is that, you know, we are very smart people, but, but smart people, they, they, they can make major mistakes and we can do really really dumb and stupid things can we we can't right so uh that that's just something that i want us to make sure that we don't think i'm calling anybody stupid i just want us to understand that people are prone to make mistakes so as i was planning the messages for for this uh for this weeks now i thought it would be appropriate to start again with a message about finances we want to start off the year on the right foot and it would be appropriate to talk about finances in church. And um, finances are very important. The Bible, you know, uh, there's... Yeah. Gabriel is having a fuss there, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, but, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I get a little bit distracted with Gabriel sometimes. But anyways, two-thirds of the parable of Jesus, they are, they are related to finances. There are well over 2,000 Bible verses that talk about finances, and only about 500 that talk about prayer and faith. So finances is something that is a major biblical topic. So just a couple of disclosures on this message. Pastor is not a financial advisor. I'm not giving any financial advisor adv uh, advice. If you need financial advice, you'll find a financial advisor. But I, I wanted to understand that I'll be sharing here with you uh, it's biblical principles. There are a lot of different principles used when it comes to finances. I want to apply to you biblical principles. How are we going to do this? As I was preparing for this message, I realized that the Bible gives us constant warnings about finances. Constantly. Now, when you read them scattered, you read one book here and then a few months later you read another one, it's hard for us to really pinpoint exactly how the Bible is warning us. But if we read them together, we categorize them, we will see there are at least major five mistakes people make with money, and the Bible warns us constantly about it. So what we did that we're gonna do this morning, I have categorized them, put them in different sections. All the verses are in your study guide here. There are many more verses, but I, I, I try to Put them together so when we read them we will see that the bible is constantly talking about this five major mistakes okay so i hope we can we can really get this uh clear to everybody here so let's go to our very first mistake that we make what we do with money we do what we waste it you say okay that's kind of obvious well let me show you a few things what is the first way uh, that most of us spend waste money. We buy things that we do what? We don't need. And that's kind of obvious, Pastor. It is. But here is the thing. 
we know this is obvious, but we keep doing this. We keep wasting money on things that we don't need, don't we? So why is it that we know, but we still buy things that we don't need? It's not a knowledge problem. It is a value problem. It is a self control problem. So uh, is there anybody here who has never bought something that you didn't need? I think uh, I've done it, right? How many of us have bought something that you didn't need? Let me see your hands. All right, right? And, it, and then you sit there you buy, and, you, and you look at the thing maybe just a few months later, a few months later you wonder, why in the world did I buy this thing? Completely useless, right? So let me give you here a few examples uh, uh, of how this happened. People buy things that they don't need and they don't have money for those things that they, that they actually need. Uh, it happened in a church. I, I, was, I was pastoring. Uh, a family, not, not a church family, came to the pastor and a couple of the elders at the end of the service. And they said, Pastor, you know, a nice meeting. And, you know, we are in a dire situation. So how can we help? Well, you know, if we don't get money for our rent today, which is about $1,200, we're going to be evicted. Kicked out. It's cold. It's bad. And let, listen to me, church. It is very difficult to be a pastor in situations like this. You really feel for a family that is about to be evicted. You really do. But at the same, at the same time, the church does not have funds for this kind of help. We use our funds. For, we help the community in many different ways, but not specifically this kind of help. But as I was talking to the family, the, the older boy had those big headphones called Boost, right? You know, you know they cost over $200? Over $200 a headphone. And then as we were discussing, they slept, less slipped in. They had an Xbox and a PlayStation, many games. One of them is smoked, and the older boy didn't want to work. Are you listening? And you tell me you don't have money for rent? Are you kidding me? And you want to come to a church and shame the church into giving because you're wasting your money with things that you don't need. No way. Not with us. Are you following what I'm saying? So if this happens, I, again, I'm not judging people, but we can see sometimes that people dig their own holes and they just keep digging it. And, they, and, and the worst thing, they dig it and they throw the, 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 the dirt over their own heads. We can't do this. If you are in a tight budget... You can't afford frivolous things. It's as simple as that. You know, I can't afford a PlayStation. I can't afford an Xbox. I can't afford this. I can't. Just don't buy it. Because then you, the money that you're supposed to be for your things that you actually need, you actually need, you're going to be wasting with things that you don't need. Now, isn't that amazing that we always find money for the things that we want and we scramble to find money for the things that we need? Priorities. It is, look what the Bible says here, Proverbs 21, 20 says, There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. The foolish man does what? Squanders it. There are people who get their pay, the first thing that they do is just buy whatever they want. Oh, look at this, this big check in my bank account. Woohoo! They go to the supermarket, they go to the store, to the mall, and they buy all this. Now, here, here, here's the thing. If you start buying so many things that you want, you won't have money for the things that you need. Isaiah 555 put it this way. Look how Isaiah says. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in what? In what? Abundance. When you are working, make sure you have enough for, enough for what you need before you buy what you want. It's as simple as this. And we keep doing it. Don't replace long-term long happiness for short-term gratification. Let me give an exa another example. I need a kid that is no more than five years old. We have I, a four-year-old. Do we have a four-year-old in the church here? A four-year-old? A five have a five-year-old? All right, let's come on in. Five-year-old. Oh, my goodness. He looks too smart. I'm in trouble. Come on in. Come in. Come in, Pastor. Okay, there you go. Carrie's already here. Oh, Carrie, thank you. All right, too late. Do you want to come? Yeah, okay. So, come, come. You can come. All right? So, that's Carrie right here. So, 
Don't help them. Okay? Are you guys gonna stand up right here. Right here. Come, come here, Carrie. Come on in. All right. All right. So this is Carrie, right? Can you say your name to everybody? What is your name? Daniel. Daniel, like the prophet, right? So you guys gonna turn to me. Turn me here. Turn to me. Okay, we're gonna do something here with you guys. Are you guys ready for this? I have in my pocket a pocket with a lot of candies. I got chocolates. I got candies. I, let me show you. Let me show you. See this chocolate? That's a lot of candies. Okay? Do you guys like candies? Chocolate? Can they get mommy and daddy? Can you get some? Can, I have this here. And you guys could share this here. Okay? Or you guys could get what I have in this pocket, which is paper. It is just paper. Can you guys see what this paper is? It is just paper, right? It's just paper. Now, what do you guys would like to have? This hand here of chocolate and candies, and or you'd like to have this paper here. Right now. You can have your you can have this right now, or you can have this right now. What would you like to have? This one here? Are you sure? Okay, what about you, Daniel? You want this one here? All right, turn around, turn around, turn around. Okay, all right. Here goes my five dollars, right? right here, here we go, here we go. So, Carrie, you want the candy, right? And Danny, you want this. Why you want this? To buy more stuff. To buy more stuff. <laughs> and Carrie, why do you want this? Because I don't want to eat some. She wants to eat some, right? Okay, so Carrie, let's do this. You want another one or? Are you sure you want this? You don't want this? You don't want this? Are you sure? Okay, so you have this. You can have this and you can have this. You can have it. You want only this? Don't you want the chocolate? No? All right. Okay. Fair enough. Come on. Let them put their hands together. You guys did phenomenal. You guys can go back. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And here goes my $5. The good thing I can afford $5, right? I planned this. I planned this. I just didn't have chocolate. I forgot this morning. Thank you. I still got your chocolate, Nikki. All right? I still got it here. All right? But you see, I mean, this is for us here. Just bring us to laugh. But it's exactly what we do. Right? In their minds, they're innocent right now. They, they, some of them, they see a little bit the bigger picture. Some of them just don't, don't. But this is exactly what we do. The difference between us and our children is that our toys are just a little more expensive. Are you listening to Pastor? But it's just a difference. It, we just got candies and, 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 and toys. We just call them cars and, and dresses and, and expensive restaurants. But the principle is the same. We, we replace long-term investment, long-term happiness, what we could get even more, to satisfy us immediately. This is exactly what Isaiah is saying. Proverbs 21, 17 says this. Whoever loves pleasure will become what? Poor. Whoever loves wine and oil will never be rich because if you spend money on things you want you only have money for the things you need it's as simple as this number two reason why how we waste money that we are not consistent what do i mean by this well i'll explain this and maybe you have not heard this before richard taylor uh he won the nobel prize in 2017 in economics and and he wrote a book called uh, misbehaving and, and behavioral economics and he really wanted to call his book dumb stuff people do with money that's what he wanted but he couldn't call his doctoral dissertation that so this is a new trend it is called behavioral economics this is coming up right now off the press 2016 and 17. this is his theory he says that human beings we do not only make financial mistakes he says we make predictable mistakes he says you can almost bet that people are going to make mistakes unless they, they're, they're, they're not taught. And, and, and he mentions a few examples. One example that's rather interesting, it says this. Suppose your next door neighbor is Joe, and Joe hates mowing his lawn. It gets him hay fevers, right? So you come to Joe and say, Joe, why don't you pay the boy down the street? He cuts your lawn for 10 bucks. 10 bucks, Joe. And Joe says, no way. Why? Because I'm not going to give my hard $10 to that boy. No, it's not worth it. Okay, Joe. So would you cut my lawn 
exact same size as yours for $20? He says, no way. Why? Because it's not worth it. Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Joe is not happy to give $10 to have his loan mown, but he's now willing to get $20, twice as much to mown someone else's loan. We don't think straight. We are afraid of losing money. We are more likely to hold the money that we have, even though it's little, instead of trying to get something that would be even better. We are not consistent with money. This next example, I think, will put things a little more clear to us. Let's say you go to your house needs a new chair. So, brother Sam, you know, go, you go to store A and you find a chore for $50. Then Florence tells you, hey, Sam, at store B, you'll find the exact same chair and that's only $40. Here's the catch. It's store B, it's a 10 minutes walk. It is a $10 saving. Would you go or not? 10 minutes walk, $10. Would you go then? How many? You would go? Okay, so Sam would go to save $10, right? All right, so let's just switch here the, 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 the question then. And how many of you guys would you, go, would you go for this? Let me see your hands. To save 10 bucks. Some hands. Okay, very good. Now, option number two, uh, example number two. Let's say you need a new computer. And you go to store A. The new computer costs $1,000. At store B, the, new, the, the exact same computer, exact same computer, the same thing, it costs $990. The only catch is 10 minutes walk. Save off $10. How many of you would go to store B and not store A? Got some of the hands. We got some of the hands, right? Now, if you, if you really answer this uh, 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 honestly, you will find that many people will answer differently. You know why? Because they think, well, you know what? It's a check. 50 bucks and 40 bucks, that's a $10 saving. I mean, that's like 20% saving. But in the example of the computer, that's just 1% saving. So it's not a big deal. But my friends, the question is, is still the same. The main question is, is $10 worth a 10 minute walk? Are you listening? Are you listening? Many of us are more likely to go to store B to buy the chair and less likely to go to store B to buy the computer because when the amount is higher, uh, what is $10 when in, in $1,000? Are you following what I'm saying? We are not consistent with money. Uh, this is called transaction utility in this language. Transaction utility basically is this, is the feeling you get when you get something for a good deal or a bad deal. It is the feeling, you know, I got a bargain. Or the feeling, you know what, I got ripped off. And this works in our minds and, 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 and the behavioral scientists, economical, economic behavioral scientists, they say that people are actually likely to not act rationally. Just because the amount of the, the, the cost of the product is higher, but it's still the savings is still the very same savings. But uh, there's a third way in which we waste money. We buy things because we believe we got what? A good deal. How many of us have ever bought? This was a good deal. I bought this. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Ah, there you go, right? And then you say like, why did I buy this stuff? It was a good deal. I mean, that's really stupid. I I've done that, right? Have you guys heard about the, the infamous MSRP? You know what that is? is what manufactured suggested retail price so if you go to a store there i'm not a mention store people are watching us online right so if you go to a store and you see that oh look at this brand new washing machine oh the msrp oh it's a thousand dollars i'm getting for eight hundred dollars wow that's a steal yeah it is a steal you get you're getting ripped off msrps are already inflated anyways if anybody has ever worked for a car dealership, hey, <laughs> they know this. So the MSRP is not really the ground rules for you to find out whether you got a better deal or not. It's really searching online. But how does this, this feeling of, oh, I got a good deal affect us? Well, it's very simple. We start filling our houses with stuff that we don't need. 
simply because we think we got a really good deal. You know, other companies that, that are taking a control of the, of the business here, they create memberships. Like, you know, you know, if you pay this fee a year, we send you stuff for free. You don't need to pay shipping. So when people are wondering when the membership is about to expire to be renewed, say, you know what, I didn't buy a whole lot of stuff. Let me buy more stuff that I don't need. So I'll make my money worth on the shipping that I paid. That money is gone already. It's never returning to you. You don't need to buy extra stuff that you don't need to compensate for money that you have already lost. How many times you've gone, you've gone to a restaurant, you bought food, you didn't like it, but hey, I paid for it. I'm going to eat it till the end. How many of you have done that? How many of your hands? Right? I, I've done that, right? I mean, I, I, do, I, I, I do it all the time. And then, how stupid is this? You're not getting your money back. I mean, the money's gone, right? You just don't eat anything and you're hungry a little bit. You don't waste more money, but still, the money is not coming back. Guys, we are super irrational when it comes to money. But how can we avert this? How the Bible help us to avert this? Well, uh, if we know we should not spend money on things that we don't need, and we do it anyways, you've got to have a plan. Are you listening to the pastor right now? You've got to have a plan. Helen and I have learned this in our own personal lives. That it is hard. When she was not working, it was really hard for us just to, to pay her school. And she was getting uh, a scholarship, but just manage everything. And now she's working. It makes a little bit better. But and whenever we want to have a second baby, she will stop working. We have to plan for this. And, and this is what happens. When you have something worthwhile in mind in the future, something like, you know, maybe you want to buy your house. Maybe, maybe you need a new car and you want to buy a new car because you, you need a new car or, or you want to go on a vacation for your family or you're planning for something in the future. Make sure that whatever you set in the future, it's something worthwhile. Because if you don't have anything worthwhile in the future, it is much easier to settle for less and eat the little candy in my hand as opposed to getting the money that can get you more, more things in the future. So how do you avert it? You have what? A plan. Make a plan and surrender the plan to God. Uh, uh, Forbes, B.C. Forbes, this is what he says in, in the past. An empty head leads to an empty pocket. How true this is. Next way in which the second stupid thing we do when we waste money, that we, we do with money, we crave it. It, it is amazing. Amazing how the Bible talks about it. Look at what he says here. Proverbs says, There is one who scatters and yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right. But it leads to what? Poverty. Verse 25 says, The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be water himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain. But blessings will be on the head of him who sells it. What is this text saying? This is what he's saying. When we, uh, when, when we crave for money, there are two harmful dynamics. Number one, we, we, we let go what we should keep, and we keep what we should let go. Let's, let's look at number one. We let go what we should keep. Well, we crave things, we want to have things, and we buy things to satisfy our cravings. Look at Proverbs 6, 8. And when we do this, we don't save money, right? If you buy things for your craving now, you have no savings left. Proverbs 6, 6, 8 says, Go to the end, you, everybody with me, slugger. Consider her ways and be what? wise, which having no captain, oversee or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Why does the ant gather her food in the summer? She can't do it in the winter. Why? It's too cold, but the ant saves. It works when it can and saves for a later time. They estimate that it would be wise for everybody of us to be saving at least about 10% of your income. That's not towards your retirement. That's saving 10%. Now, if 
for many of us, this is like, are you kidding me saving 10% of my income? Pastor, I'm scratching the barrel. I can barely make ends meet. I can't save 10%. Okay. But try to save 50 bucks a month if you can. In a whole year, you'd have saved $600. Guys, $600, it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Put it aside. Because you never know when a bad day will come. The Bible talks about when we, when we give them into cravings, we are not able to save for the future. If you can't save 50 bucks again, it's fine or whatever. Try to save as much as you can. So don't let go what you should keep at this time, meaning your savings. The second harmful dynamic that happens when we are craving money is that we keep what we should let go, meaning that we hold on to money, we are not generous. Proverbs 21, 25 says, the, the craving, look at the Bible uses the word, the craving of the slugger will be the death of him because he hands the what? Refuse to work. All day he craves for more, but the righteous go without <coughs> his sparing. The fool, the, the fool keeps what he should let go and he lets go of what he should keep. Have you ever done that? We let go of what we should keep, and we end up keeping the times we should let go. And it happens. How does that happen in the life of a Christian? Again, I don't want to offend anybody. Don't think this is like an indirect message to anyone here. Don't misunderstand me. But I got to say this. How does this happen in the life of a Christian? Super Bowl is coming. You have this huge 65-inch TV. And your wife says, no, you're sitting there like a potato couch. Can you go and do something? No, no, let me stay here. Let me watch. And no, I need, a, I need a bigger TV. I need a 70-inch TV. No, no, no. You know what? I don't need it. I need a 75-inch TV. No, 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 no. I need that 82-inch TV. No, no. This is too, this, no, I need that 86-inch TV. And you'll buy that thing that nobody can even carry, right? They have to bring this truck to bring this thing in your house. And, and, and then you buy this almost $2,000 TV that people have to stay like 500 feet away to be able to see it. It's like this, this cinema screen in your house. And when you come to church, I mean, if you have money, fine. I'm, you, listen to me. If you have money, you want to buy it, by all means, have fun. Watch your Super Bowl. Have a great time. But don't come to church and say that trying to renovate a room for $2,000 is too much money. Don't come to church and say, I'm not giving, you know, they, the pet finders want to go to wash cars. I'm not giving a hundred. I'm not giving, I'm, make, I'm not making pledges so your students can go to school. Why, this is too much money. Are you listening to your pastor? If, if we really, really, really believe this is God's house, I said this before, if you really believe this is God's house, this place should be better than our homes. Better than our homes. Now, God has blessed this church tremendously. A lot of us, our members are giving, returning their tithes and giving more. And praise the Lord for this. Last year, we had 27% increase in tithe. Can you believe that? This is the first year in the history of this church that we've crossed the 500,000 mark in tithe. Praise the Lord. But we still, some of us are still not giving as we should. And every time we withhold what we should let go, we are stealing from others we're stealing from God. Again, I have no problem if somebody wants to buy a 100-inch TV. I don't think they exist, but if they do, by all means, by don't come uh, to the house of God with pennies when you go shopping with $100 bills. That's an offense to God. Your house is like a palace, and the house of God stays in ruins. There's a book in the Bible that talks about that, by the way. You can take a read of this. First Timothy says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of what? Evil. For which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. This text is saying here that even those in those days of, of Paul, there, are, there were those who left the church because of their money, of greed. And it just only gave them more headaches. Proverbs 119. So are the days of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the what? The life of its owner. Greed is the desire for more, but it is like a black hole. You know what a black hole is? It's in the universe, in the space. It sucks everything 
Nothing escapes a black hole, not even light itself. That's what greed does to us. How can we avert this? How can you avert this craving? Now, the first one you have to make a what? A plan. The next one now you make a pledge with God. You set aside, no, Lord, I want to be faithful and generous. Not only faithful, I want to be faithful and generous. I'm going to start setting X amount, a percentage of my income to your glory. How much is the tithe? 10%. 10%, no negotiable. 10%. Offerings, you may give five, some give it seven, eight, ten. It's more of a personal thing. You, got, you can't come to God with, with, with cheap change if you have more. Now, if you don't have anything, even the little coins you bring, it's a lot. God does not take into consideration the amount you're giving. is the, the intention of your heart to give. Make a pledge with God. Set aside a specific percentage of your finances every month to God before you pay any bill, before you pay anything else, just set that aside. And, and when your cravings come, you look in your bank account, you know what? I don't have as much money anymore because I return to, to God what is right, what, what rightly belongs to Him. You know what? I'm not going to afford, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just give me the luxury of having this craving because I already gave to God what belongs to Him. Guys, look at this beautiful mother's woman that we have. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. People were giving towards that. Thank you. We have other things happening in the church. Thank you so much for giving. This is not a complaint. I am just want us to be aware that sometimes we are still withholding what rightly belongs to God. And every time we do this, this is a very stupid mistake. Because when you invest in the kingdom of God, it pays high dividends. You're not able to see in this world the blessings that it is. People that built this church 20 years ago, look what they have today. And look how many people have come to Christ through this church. Our children come here. It is worth it. Make a pledge with God. A way, so the first way we, 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 the first mistake, stupid, is what we do with money. We waste it. The second one, we crave it. The third one, we hate, waste it. We haste it. Why do I mean by this? Well, the Bible talks about it constantly. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who, what? Hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. A man with an evil eye does what? Hasten after riches and does not consider the poverty will come upon him. Look how the New Century Version puts this in Proverbs 13. I love this. Money that comes easily does what? Disappears quickly. But money that is gathered little by little will grow. Do you know the difference between the rich and the wealthy? There's th this is what the wealthy and the rich say. In, in, in the I forgot, I have the quote if you need it. This is, the rich have a lot of money. The wealthy, the wealthy, they know how to make a lot of money. Which means this, you could eventually become rich overnight. You get an inheritance, you win the lottery. No, nobody here, right? Nobody's playing the lottery here, right? But you win the lottery overnight, you become rich overnight. But you have not yet become wealthy. Why? Because those who are wealthy, they know that wealth takes time to build. There is no get rich. But aside from those things, we should not be borrowing money to buy things that we think we need. Especially with credit card debt. They say that America's average household is about $8,000 in debt with credit cards. Buying things sometimes that you don't need. How do you avert this? Biblically speaking, three steps. The first one is to do what? Pause. Next one is to do what? And third one, you do what? Ponder. Pause. Do I need this? I will never forget. It's not even in the script. The first time I came, I came through, um, what do you call the, no, it's not home sharing. It's um, the place where you, uh, time share. I'll, maybe some of you have it. Great. But I'll never forget when I came to that. And they approached, we were, Helen and I, we got this. You guys can come to this place and then you only pay, you uh, know, like $300. You have the whole weekend. It's like, this is really cheap. It's a great deal. So we took and we went. Then they took us like half a day in this 
ongoing talking about that thing. I was getting annoyed, but then they, they, they showed us this thing. You know, this is really cool. You know, you can choose anywhere in the world. It would be amazing, and they were lowering the price and doing everything. And then I'm thinking, like, wow, this would be really cool. And I'm thinking, oh, this is too quick. I'm not even thinking. And then God whispers in my ear. He says this. You don't even have a house, and you want to buy a place for, to stay for your vacation? Right? That's when that's the, I, I stuck my heels. No, no. <laughs> I was like a donkey. I'm not going anywhere. They were pretty upset with me. I had to tell them, like, no, like 500 times. But, but you follow what I'm saying? When we don't think, and, and but people, people that work with sales, you know that you try to close the deal. I, I taught people how to sell. You try to close the deal at that time. If they take the time to think, they may end up not getting it. Before you buy things, pause. Before you buy things, you pray. Before you buy things, you ponder. Do I need this? This is how the Bible helps us to avert uh, hasting after money. Point number four, stupid thing we do. We do what? We trust it. This is getting deep now. This is getting deep. This is a huge mistake. Probably one of the biggest ones that we have. When we trust money to do what only God can do, we're in a dire situation. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. He who trusts in riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. Proverbs 23 says, Do not overwork to be rich, because your own understanding cease. You will set your eyes on what is not. Everybody with me now. For riches certainly make themselves what? Wings. They fly away like the eagles towards heaven. First Timothy. For the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty. What is haughty? Proud, arrogant, right? Not to, be, not to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, which richly provides us everything to what? To enjoy. We think that the more money we have, the safer we are. We think the more money we have in our bank account, the more things we can do. In a sense, that's true, in a sense, but in another sense, it is not. Money can be some of us, money, it makes, sh money can give you a, a somewhat a, of a shield and somewhat of a shelter, but money makes shields of plastic and shelters of hay. You can't stand on the foundation that money gives. In Luke chapter 12, I'm not going to put the text on the screen. We have the parable of the, of the foolish uh, rich man. He, fin he just had a harvest, and, and his harvest produced like <coughs> a lifetime. He says, I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for yourself for years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And this is how Jesus ends. This is how it will be with whoever he stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. Are you listening? Church, save money. Invest it. Make plans. But don't put your trust in money because it's sure will betray you. How do we avert this? Trust in the Lord. Only God can save you when nothing else can. Your money cannot save you. What about Steve Jobs? Is there anybody who does not know who he was? Incredibly wealthy man. Was his money able to save him from his cancer? Not. Let it sink in. Don't put your trust in money. Because if your trust is in money, to whom will you go when your money is gone? Mis the first mistake, we do what? We waste it. Number two, we crave it. Number three, we haste it. Number four, we trust it. And the last one now is that we worship money. This is the crown of all mistakes we do with money. And how does that happen? <coughs> <laughs> Similar to trust. Don't store 
treasures for yourselves here on earth, where moth and trust will destroy them, and thieves can break in and steal them. But store your treasures in heaven, where they cannot be destroyed by moth or rust, and where thieves cannot break in and steal. Everybody with me now? Your heart will be where your treasure is. Here's where the rubber meets, meets the road. The road. How do you know we are storing up treasures here on earth and not in heaven? Friends, simple. Are you withholding what, righteously, what rightly belongs to God? Are, you come to church, you say you love Jesus. You say, I will stand, I will die for Jesus. I will go, I will go to the mountains when the persecution comes. I will die for Jesus. But are you withholding his tithe and his offering right now? Who are you kidding? You think you're going to die for Jesus? You can't even give him what is his? I'm sorry to say this, but this is the reality. It is this reality. When we start holding money to ourselves to afford our luxuries and our cravings, and we don't return to God, to his cause, this is not about having the, making the church have money. It's about people. You see people being baptized. You see children being dedicated. You see lives being transformed in this church. Amen? We have to support that. But if we, if we don't return rightly what belongs to God, we are just not a part of it. When God baptizes you, He also baptizes our wallet, our finances. We have to surrender to God. And, and if we keep buying luxury stuff that we really don't need, to look great, I always wanted this car. I always wanted this jacket. I always wanted this computer. And it's fine. Great. But don't put yourself first before God. Because again, friends, when we are buying stuff for ourselves, we're really worshiping money. That, that's, that's the reality. We, we don't return to God what belongs to Him. We refuse to give to Him what He's asking of us. We spend stuff buying money, expensive, spending buying expensive things, but we can't care less about the house of God. We go shopping, as I said, with $100 bills and come to church with little coins in our hands. And again, it's not about how much you give, it's the percentage. Children's story, people give money with coins, it's fine. I'm not saying about this. Give as much as you can, you can give coins, but I'm saying it is in our homes. You know what is going on in your house. The Bible, Malachi 3, when God is speaking to his people, when they were withholding tithes and the offerings, God had a curse and a promise to them. Look, this is the curse. Look what God says here. Will a man rob God? You have robbed me. But you say, in what way have, you, have we robbed you, Lord? And he says, what thing? Tithes and offerings. Not only tithes. Tithes and the two of them together. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation have robbed God. So what does it mean to us here? Have you thought about this, that maybe it is not that you, it's not that you are broke and you can't afford tithing. Maybe it's because that you don't tithe that you are broke. Have you listened to that? You listen to me? very carefully maybe there is a chance that because we have we it's not that god wants you to 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 suffer but because you have not learned how to deal with finances you have not learned how to be faithful with tithe and generous with offerings you still need a way to go before god how can god bless you with much if you're not faithful in little how can that happen how can you come to God and help? Lord, please help me to pay all my bills. God, I'll give you. But this is only going to increase your greed. You have to let go and stop worshiping money. Money has this grip on us. This is the curse. When we, when we don't turn to God what rightly belongs to Him, we may, not saying all the time, but we may end up in financial difficult situation because we have not learned how to manage money in the first place. If you put God first, 10, 15, 20%, whatever it is that you set aside, and now you, you will learn how to manage your money because you have less now for yourself. It will create a habit of managing your money. This is the curse. If you, if, if, you're not honor, if you don't honor God with your tithe and the offerings, you may end up in financial strife. The good thing is this. 
God's amazing grace is amazing. It's amazing. God will never leave you with a curse. He has a promise, a challenge. Look what he says this here. Look what he says this. Bring all tithes into the storehouse. But then maybe what? Food in my house. And does what? And try me. And does what? Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, and there will not what? What? There will not be room enough to what? To receive it. So God is not leaving you with a curse. Isn't that what? Test me. Trust me. I know it's hard. I know it is difficult. Maybe you think you can't give this much now, but start with something. Trust me. I will hold your hand. I will walk. But it start with God, and God will, God will bless you. He will. He told us that, and He does. We have members who could tell you story after story. Matthew 6, 24. You're almost over, guys. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both what? God and, and money. Francis Bacon once said this in the, in the 1600s, says this, money is a great but a bad master. Let it sink in. Think about this. When you, when, when you know how to use your money, it will do so much good for your life, for those around you, for the people you love. But when you let money become your master, ho, 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 it is a cruel master. It will torture you. It will suck the life away from you and everything you have. If you don't let God handle your money, your money will handle you. He will play with you. If you make your money your God, to which God will you go when your money is gone? Are you listening to the pastor? We can't worship money. Money, handling money it is difficult, yes. That's why we have to trust God. And I have learned in my personal life, people, most people know pastors in the Adventist church really don't make a whole lot of money. They don't. But God has always provided to us to all our needs. We have never lacked anything. And by the grace of God, especially the help of my wife, we have always given to God. It is amazing how Helen has helped me to stop being stupid and greedy with money. She helped me a lot. Am, am I where I should be, where I wanted to be? No. But I'm telling from, from experience, we have never lacked anything. The same God who has blessed my life is also willing to bless yours. Let's stop doing those silly things with money. And let's honor God. What is the first one? We what? We waste it. Second one? We crave it. Third one? We haste it. Fourth one? We trust it. Fifth one? We worship it. Let's make sure we don't make those five mistakes. That's
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, and I thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you because you are great. And Lord, we pray that you help us not to make the mistakes. Help us not to waste the money, not to crave after it, not to haste after it, not to trust it, and much less to worship it. Let us help us to surrender our finances today into your hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.